What is the best alternative to the stunning Rolex Explorer 1? And why is it the Tudor Black Bay 36? I hope to give you the answers to all the big questions during this review before I, at the end of the video, give it my ratings in the reviewers column. How will it match the Pelagos 39, the GMT Master 2 and the Omega Seamaster 300? Let's find out. All right, I'm Cohen, and today I'll give you three good reasons to why your next watch should be the magnificent Black Bay 36. One, the size. The Black Bay 36 carries splendid measurements. The 36mm case diameter is pretty bang on, according to my calipers. The height is a modest 10.3mm and a semi-big, for its size, lug-to-lug -lug of 43.8mm. The lug width of the watch is, like the newest iteration of the Explorer 1, 19mm, which I think is the proportionate correct size for 36mm watches especially these exact models. It wears a tiny bit bigger than its 36mm on my 16.5cm wrists and hugs the wrist in great fashion. The bracelet is one of the best bracelets out there. I'd put money on it being the best one in its price segment. The Black Bay 36 bracelet also includes female end links, making the watch lug-to-lug -lug measurements correct as the end links don't protrude from the lugs. 2. The design. The design of the watch is simple, clean and symmetrical. If you agree, please subscribe, like and comment. It really helps a new channel out in the algorithm and gives me motivation to up my game. It truly makes my day. I check my numbers way too much. But Back to it. There are a few, what I like to call, Tudor flaws. On this Tudor as well, but it all depends on the eye of the beholder, because these flaws are either regarded as minor, or you might actually not regard them as flaws at all. A common criticism of the watch is the screw down crown, which might look like it's not all the way screwed in because of the black ring that surrounds the inner part but I assure you it's meant to be like that. The other thing some might consider an imperfection is the dial design, and I'm a bit back and forth on this, because the applied indices are designed like typical dive style indices, and some might say that Tudor just pulled the diver's bezel insert from the dive style models and replaced it with a polished one. The last flaws, or in my case, traits, the snowflake hands and the smiley, self-winding text on the dial. Certain people might argue that this specific design element ruins the symmetry of the watch, and they are correct. It does. Personally, I love both those attributes, and I feel they give the watch character and personality, as well as paying a tribute to their heritage. By the way, it's just a matter of time before they replace the smiley dial all other Tudor sports watches have switched to in-house manufacture calibers. When they eventually do upgrade, perhaps in 2023, the Black Bay 36, the Smiley will no longer be smiling. So if you want a future classic and or enjoy the Smiley dial, get it now. The watch is all brushed apart from the polished bezel, bracelet sides and case sides. Another thing about the case is that it's a characteristic Rolex sport watch case, flat sides and flat bottom. I feel it. Another similarity to Rolex is the sapphire crystal. It's flat as a pancake and appears to have anti-reflective coating only on the inside. The watch gives the typical Rolex glare and light play. The silver dial truly is silver compared to other silver dials that might look white or champagne. 3. The function. The watch is obtainable in leather, fabric strap or bracelet and suits all options very well. 
It really is a go anywhere, do anything watch. Especially with that sexy 150 meter water resistance that also might be downgraded to 100 meters once the watch gets its weighted upgrade. And as stated in an earlier video, my hypothesis is that Tudor in some distant future will be a premium brand and perhaps take over the Rolex spot, while Rolex will join the big boys. Also in stores, not only the second hand market, the Black Bay 36 has, alongside other Tudors and Rolex, had significant price rises every year. Back to wearability, I feel it goes with anything, but this is where the indices bother me a tiny bit. They are sporty and not dressy, but this is nitpicking. I've owned the watch three times, so I clearly rate it a whole lot. To finish off today's review, here's this week's reviewers column rated in classic IMDB style. 1. Bezel Action is the first one on divers, replaced by legibility. 8 out of 10. Strong contrasts, beautiful symmetry, but you know, the glare. 2. Functionality. 8 out of 10. As a personal reference, I enjoy a date function on my watches, but this can be integrated to any outfit and carries a robust interior. 3. Versatility. 9 out of 10. Go anywhere, do anything. But how do you like the indices? 4. Design. 9 out of 10. The same tiny drawback as the previous point. 5. Feeling of quality. 10 out of 10. Nothing beats the Black Bay 36 in this price segment. Total. 8.8. .8. The same rating as The Fellowship of the Ring, Pulp Fiction and Forrest Gump in Great Company BB36. The points gained on versatility knocks the GMT Master 2 and the Pelagos 39 off the throne. Guess this says a lot about my taste. See you in the next one, watch fam. <laughs>